Well, good evening. Turn in your songbooks and stand with me to number 624. Count your blessings. Let's sing all four verses. Number 624. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, Name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings. <clears throat> when you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings, money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. All right, next song, page number 517. 517, I am resolved. I am resolved no longer to linger Charmed by the world's delight Things that are higher, things that are nobler These have allured my sight I will hasten to him Hasten so glad and free Jesus, greatest, highest I will come to thee. I am resolved to go to the Savior, leaving my sin and strife. He is the true one, he is the just one, he hath the words of life. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved to follow the Savior, faithful and true each day. He, what he saith, do what he willeth, he is the living way. I will hasten to him, hasten to God. I will come to thee. I am resolved to enter the kingdom, leaving the paths of sin. Friends may oppose me, foes may beset me, still I will enter in. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. I will come to thee. You may 
may be seated. We'll pray in just a minute after we read our missionary letters. We sang, Count Your Blessings, and if you're here tonight, that ought to be one of the blessings that you're counting, that you're not homesick like a lot of other people. And uh, I was thinking, standing up here, I was like, man, I sure am glad not everybody's sick tonight. And, uh, but we're thankful that you're here in the house of the Lord, and uh, we're going to trust that we have a, a good service and good time around the Word of God and fellowship with each other, even if our numbers are down a little bit tonight. And uh, so let's go ahead and read our missionary letters. Hopefully you grabbed them on your way in. And uh, we'll read these letters and have a word of prayer. And uh, so the first letter is from the Gutlays. Um, they say, uh, Dear Pastor and Church family, greetings to everyone. We hope you all are doing well in serving the Lord. We have been so busy these past few months working on the church building project in the province of Lotbury, I guess. Um, so I don't, I, now I first time I've read these and had to pronounce some of these words, and I don't like it. So um, after much, then there's another one coming that's much harder than that one too. So um, after much prayer and, and God's supplication towards this work, uh, we had our first worship service, July 6, 2024. We have distributed, distributed hundreds of gospel tracts around the area and invited people to come and worship with us uh, as we opened the church doors and dedicated the sanctuary. We are excited about this new work and praying for God's hand to work upon the people's lives in this place. We give all the glory and praise to God. This quarter, we had nine souls follow the Lord in believers uh, in water baptism at Grace Baptist Church in that other place there. Our, our soul winning ministry has also witnessed 75 souls who accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. It has always been a great challenge to establish new believers, which is why we encourage them to continue attending church and through Christ they will grow in grace and truth. On the back side it says the children's, minist children's home ministry is also thriving. However, we are still struggling to acquire a permit for the foundation. Many requirements need to be met and some restrictions must be observed. At this time, we are just grateful that this ministry has been a great blessing to these children. My wife and I celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary last May 14th, 2024. And we praise God for his blessing upon our marriage life and for giving us the joy of serving him together. The kids are now back in school and we thank the Lord that everyone in the family is doing great. Thank you so much for always including us in your prayers and your financial support is, is, is indeed a big help. We appreciate you and pray that the grace of God will always abound in you. Brother Ronald Gutle. Um, the next letter is from the Murray family in Southeast Asia. It says, Blessed be the name of the Lord, great is his faithfulness. We are so blessed to serve a risen Savior who ever liveth to make intercession for us and co-labors with us. He is a wonderful partner in ministry and so are you who hold up our hands up and enable us to continue in this ministry. We cannot thank those of you who pray for, give to, and encourage us enough. Philippians 1.3 applies to each of you. I just returned from the Philippines where our Lord blessed so wonderfully in so many ways. The Lord enabled me to visit and preach in many of our churches while there. It was such a blessing from the Lord to be able to encourage our church planters their families, and churches. Most of our churches are still growing and glowing for the glory of God. They are faithfully serving in their areas. Little by little, the Lord is building His church. Most, of, most all of our churches are in building programs. Some have started extensions with the intent of actually planting other churches. I spent a lot of time um, counseling people. All of our pastors welcomed my help in encouraging their people. I literally had counseling sessions every day throughout most of the day, spending at least six hours of day, a day doing so. I'm thankful that the Lord gave me those opportunities to be a help to our brethren. Please pray that those folks will be able to apply the advice that was shared and God will give them victory in their lives. I was also blessed to distribute ministry helps while there, including Bibles, tracts, study books, uh, and musical instruments. The people were so excited and encouraged to receive these materials. We are thankful for his provisions. Of course, the doors of opportunity swing on the hinges of opposition. 
We face some spiritual warfare along the way as well as physical problems. I had to visit the emergency room while there, thinking I was dehydrated, only to discover that I had a serious amount of pneumonia in my lungs. This altered our plan my plans. I, I hope so. Um, as I was unable to stay the planned length of time, nor was I able to proceed to Thailand. I spent several days in the hospital, yet I believe our Lord was glorified in this missionary journey. Sinners were saved, saints were encouraged, and servants were strengthened. The seed was sown, and he promises his word to never return void, but would accomplish what it was sent forth to do in his time. Please continue to pray for our personal support to be increased so that we can do more for the Lord. It is our desire to win more souls, to make more disciples, and start more churches throughout Southeast Asia. Thus far, the Lord has started 77 ministries through our efforts, and we want to see him do more in 2024. Uh, however, we need that increase in personal support, so please pray with us about that. Your friends and servants, Brother Chris and Amy Murray. So let's go ahead and spend a couple of minutes praying for the Gutley family and for the Murray family, and uh, then we'll shake hands and say hi to each other after that, all right? Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord, and thank you for our church. Thank you for the ministries that you've enabled us to partner with. And Lord, tonight we've read letters and updates from two of our faithful partners in ministry that are serving you um, in other parts of the world. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for the great updates, the great reports of souls being saved and people being baptized and churches growing and expanding and just uh, your blessing is, obvi is obviously on those ministries and we pray that you would continue to have your hand upon them and use um, the Gutleys and the Murrays in a powerful way in their areas of mission that you call them to. And Lord, we thank you for the privilege of supporting them and uh, helping them in the w w little ways we can. And I pray that, uh, Lord, you would continue to help us to be faithful in our missions giving that we might um, be able to do more in the days to come, support more missionaries and more ministries and just see a greater work accomplished. Lord, I pray that you'd be with the children's ministry that the Gutleys have. Um, and uh, Lord, you know the needs with their building projects and the obstacles that they're facing. Lord, we pray that you would provide for that and that you would um, continue to allow them to impact the lives of numbers of children over there. And Lord, we pray that you'd be with the Murrays and their need for financial support. Uh, Lord, to continue to expand the ministry that you've given them. I pray that you'd be with all their national pastors and partners that have helped them with starting these churches. Pray that you continue to help them to grow and to thrive and meet the needs that they have as well. And Lord, continue to bring laborers and Lord, help them to be able to disciple and to grow uh, the converts that are there into laborers for the cause of Christ. And Lord, I pray that you'd be glorified through all of that. We thank you Lord, for their faithfulness, we pray that you would strengthen them. Lord, bless their families, keep them safe and healthy. Lord, watch over them and protect them, and we'll give you glory for all that you continue to do through them in their ministry. And uh, Lord, help us to remember to lift them up in prayer uh, faithfully, Lord, and I pray that you'd be glorified through that as well. And Lord, we ask your blessing upon our service here tonight. May all that's said and done be pleasing in your eyes. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you praise for all of it. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's uh, stand to our feet. Um, Becca will play something on the piano, and we'll shake hands for a minute, and then we'll have the offering and announcements just after that. So.
verse of that, she's been playing it solid rock. Here we go. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ's solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Okay. Just a couple of quick announcements. Um, there'll be no... What's that? Oh yeah, you can sit down. <laughs> Stay standing, whatever. Your choice tonight, whatever you want to do. Um, no senior lunch tomorrow. Okay, Brother Dan asked me to announce that with the, all the sickness that's going around and everything. He just, they're going to cancel the senior luncheon tomorrow. I know many of you are very disappointed. I know, but it'll be okay. Take a baby aspirin, go buy yourself some Bob Evans, and you'll be happy, okay? Um, but uh, no senior lunch. And I was just talking with Brother Lee. This is not an official announcement, but... Maybe the same for men's prayer breakfast on Saturday, too. So listen for an update on that via the phone tree and all that good stuff. So we'll see how all that goes. So, um, but uh, then other than that, um, I don't, wasn't given any other announcements. So that's it, short and sweet. Ushers, if you want to come at this time, we'll receive our Wednesday night offering. Um, Fall Fellowship is just around the corner. Bible conference has come and gone. We've just got a couple of months till fall fellowship. I'm looking forward to that. I hope you are too. And of course, you all know that the money is collected on Wednesday night. Go to help with that. So give as the Lord leads. And uh, do we have uh, an usher with a microphone tonight or no? No microphone? All right. I didn't want to be the one to overlook that. I know pastor does sometimes accidentally. So all right, I'll pray. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to give. Lord, I pray that you would just help us to give as you lead and Help us to give cheerfully, and I pray that you'd use the money that's collected, uh, Lord, to further your kingdom, to be a blessing, Lord, to fund the Fall Fellowship, to be an encouragement to the church, to be a, an encouragement to the preachers that come, and uh, Lord, I pray that you would be honored by all that's done with it, and uh, thank you again for the privilege to give, and uh, I pray that you'd be glorified in it. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Brother Stark.
our sorrow share. Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. forsake thee take it to the Lord in prayer in his arms he'll take and heal thee you will find a solace Let's go back to number 423 again. We, we sang a verse, but um, i just looking for another song, but I just like that one. So number 423, I'm going to ask you to stand with me, and let's sing all four verses of this. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ's solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. Every high and stormy gale My anchor holds within the veil On Christ's solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand His oath, His covenant, His blood Support me in the whelming flood when all around my soul gets way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ's solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found. Rest in his righteousness alone, fall less to stand before the throne. On Christ's solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Thank you, maybe see. All right, open your Bibles to Romans chapter 6, please. Thank you, thank you. All right, Romans chapter 6. I told pastor this afternoon that I was really kind of torn between two different messages, that two different topics, two different thoughts that the Lord had laid on my heart and so little just before I came left to come here the Lord I think settled this in my mind and, and in my heart is what we're supposed to look at tonight and uh, we're going to read a few verses in Romans chapter number six as a text that will help us get on the thought that the Lord has for us this evening so Romans chapter six and verse number 13 
The Bible says in here, uh, verse 13, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What shall we say then? Shall we, or what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, <clears throat> his servants ye are to whomever, to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, uh, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness, unto holiness. So in this passage of Scripture, we see a word that is repeated at least a half a dozen times, and that's the word yield. Yield. And we've been, we've been talking about in our young adults class on Sunday nights, we, we spent probably I don't know, five or six Sunday nights talking about the topic and studying the topic of being yielded, surrendered, and submitted. And that's what I want to talk about and preach about for a little bit this evening and ask with the Lord's help, I hope that it'll be a blessing to you. So let me go ahead and pray one more time before I get too far into this. And Heavenly Father, I love you. God, I am humbled to stand where I stand tonight. And Lord, even as I considered the topic of the message this evening, Lord, I've often uh, questioned my own yieldedness to you and how surrendered I've been to you and how submissive my heart is to you. And Lord, I know I don't deserve this privilege tonight to preach your word, but I'm thankful for it. And I just want to be used by you. I want to be a blessing. I want to be a help, and I pray that your Holy Spirit would just take control of this message, this thought, this time, minister in our hearts as you see fit, and help us not to in any way grieve, resist, or quench your Spirit from moving among us. Lord, help us to have a yielded heart tonight, a surrendered life, a submissive spirit, and Lord, I pray that you'd be glorified in it that we'd yield much fruit as a result of it. And Lord, we'll give you praise for all that you do. Please bless our pastor, his family, and the many, many others who are homesick tonight. Lord, I pray that you'd help them to recover quickly. Lord, bring them back to us at the next appointed time. Lord, we'll give you glory for that. Again, we ask your help with the message, the preaching. Be with the hearer as well. And we'll give you glory. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As I mentioned a minute ago, we've been studying this in our young adults class for at least five or six different Sunday nights. We started back before Missions Work Week. That's how long ago we started it. Um, and if you were to go down to the young adults classroom, you'd see a, on the whiteboard there a whole bunch of scribbles with these words on it and a bunch of verses and things that we've been looking at and we've been going through all those scriptures and talking about how they apply to this thought, this concept of yieldedness and we've tried to do it in kind of more of a Bible study format and having a lot more conversation and input from all the young adults in there and, and rather than just me preaching at everybody but I've taken a lot of those notes and those thoughts that we've been discussing and I've tried to summarize it tonight into a message on that topic because I believe with all my heart that the, uh, the concept, the idea of the child of God, the Christian ha have it being yielded and surrendered and submissive to God 
is really foundational to our growth in the Lord, to our, our ability to serve Him, uh, to our obedience to His will for our lives. It really, it really is important to overcoming sin, to, like, I mean, yieldedness and surrender to the Lord. Really, th- this, it, it's just all about aligning our heart and our mind and our desires with God's. That's really what it comes down to. It's, it's not about trying to get God to adjust His plan to what we want, but being yielded, surrendered, and submissive is all about us having an attitude and being moldable and being movable to the point where God is able to align our wants, our wishes, our desires with His so that we can be in full and complete obedience uh, confident that we're in the will of God, serving where He wants us, doing what He wants us to do. And so I think that the, this concept, and, and I've been spending a lot of time on it with our young adults because, I mean, we all need to have this in our lives, but our young adults, our college-age students and people in their early 20s, they're at a point where they're you know, making a lot of decisions, careers and relationships and things of all that, all that and like, I'm trying to stress really hard in all of that that every decision you make in regards to your life and your future needs to be made with a yielded, submitted, and uh, surrendered heart to God first. You know, it's not about what you want with your life. It's not about what your goals and your plans and your dreams are for your life. It's what does God want for me? What does God have for me? What would God have me to do? We've examined and talked about having the uh, understanding the gifts and talents and abilities that God has blessed you with. I think that is a, a part of determining what God's will is for your life. As much as I would love to be, uh, I know that it's not God's will for me to be a professional singer because he hasn't given me that talent. So no matter how bad I wanted it, it was it, no amount of coaching and teaching and education is going to correct my voice to enough to where people want to hear it, you know? So, like, so examining your talents and gifts and abilities that God has given you is definitely part of it, but it also, uh, you know, it starts with being surrendered, being yielded, being submitted to the Lord. And so um, let me give you a couple of definitions that we came up with that we really liked down in the young adults class of these words, and then we'll look at a couple of scriptures, make a few applications. And uh, I hope that through all of this, that each person in here, young or old, will ask themselves the question, how yielded, surrendered, and submit, submitted am I to God in my life? How yielded, surrendered, and submitted am I? to God in my life. So let's look through this a little bit. The first we see the word yielded. The definition that we came up with is this, giving one's heart to God so that one's desires and intentions can be made pure. Yielded means giving one's heart to God so that your desires and intentions can be made pure. Yielding to the Lord, it starts with an attitude of the heart. It starts with, in here, a willingness to just say, all right, Lord, here. Here I am. You know, and, and we, we see the example of the psalmist in Psalm uh, uh, 51 and verse 10. He said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. We know David was dealing with sin in that chapter and repentance, but it showed a yielded desire to have his heart right with God. He was yielding. He was giving it over to the Lord. Um, and so when I, when I think about yielding, obviously we, everybody in here who drives is familiar with yield signs, right? And uh, what they mean. It's not a stop sign necessarily, but it means you got to slow down. You got to pause. You got to watch uh, for the oncoming traffic. You got to yield right away to another individual. And that's a really good example uh, of what it means for us to yield to God. I think sometimes we get in our heart and in our mind an idea or something that we want to do, and we go headlong into it, and we, go, we get moving 100 miles an hour, and we don't take time to stop and yield and wait for the Lord's direction. 
We don't take time to pause and let God take the lead. We don't give God the right away in that. We just like get an idea and then we just run with it and we don't wait for God to make the move, to wait for God to, to, to have the right away. And I think we need to get in that practice of stopping and waiting on the Lord and, and just letting Him lead in our lives. Not just chasing after our dreams and chasing after whatever our heart desires and whatever. Just let God lead. Take a minute, pause, yield, and wait for God to take the lead. I think it's important. We know that the scriptures tell, tell us that God will lead us. In Psalm 23, you know, the Bible tells us that he leads us beside the still waters. God is our shepherd. He's a, he leads us. That's one of the duties, one of the things that he'll do in our lives. Um, and, and he desires to lead us as the shepherd leads us. But in order for him to do that, we got to be submissive. We got to be yielded. We got to be willing to let God lead in that. Let's look at a couple verses in Psalms real quick. In Psalm 23, I mentioned it already, but verse number three, um, well, verse number two, it says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Hey, by the way, that's one way you'll know whether it's God leading you or something else leading you is is this righteous? Is this holy? Is this pleasing to God? Is it contrary to Scripture? Like, there's some simple ways to determine whether God's the one leading or whether it's Satan or the world that you're following after your own fleshly desires. But look also at Psalm 31 and verse number 3. Is the psalmist writes here and says, For thou art my rock and my fortress, therefore for thy name's sake lead me and guide me. He says, therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. I think if we get the mindset and the attitude uh, that the psalmist had and the understanding, I think, that the psalmist had that our, uh, the decisions that we make and the places we go, the things we do in this life are a reflection of the God that we serve. Do you agree with me on that? The choices that we represent Christ is what I'm trying to say. And so the psalmist said, for thy name's sake, lead me. I think David had a, 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 a healthy fear of the Lord, and he didn't want to do anything that would bring shame or reproach to the cause of Christ. And so he said, Lord, for your name's sake, please lead me. Because he had a desire to do what's right. He had a desire to please God. He wanted to have a, a right testimony and, and a right spirit that, that when people looked at him, they could say, you know what, David is following God. And that's the attitude we ought to have. That's the desire we ought to have, that when people look at us around us, they can say, you know what? That is a Christian who is following the Lord. This yielded completely uh, to the Lord, letting God lead. And we know that one of the ways that God leads, of course, the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us into truth. We know that uh, He leads through sometimes circumstances. He'll direct our paths. He'll use events in our lives to kind of nudge us one way or another if we're being stubborn, but ultimately the best way that God leads is through his word. In Psalm 119, 105, the Bible tells us that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When we want to know where God wants us to go or what he wants us to do, we just need the lamp shining on our path. I've, I, every major decision that I've ever made for the Lord and, and many small ones um, surrendering to missions and whatever, like all those things, I can take you as God was working in my heart and I was trying to determine, Lord, is this what you want me to do? God would give me a scripture. He would confirm his leading by giving me a scripture, a verse or many verses that I can look to and say, yeah, this is what God's leading me to do. I know he's leading. This, his word is illuminating my path. So we, to be yielded to God, I really got to move or we're going to take six weeks to go through this tonight too. Um, but being yielded, giving one's heart to God so that your desires and intentions can be made pure. Surrender is the next word. The definition we came up with is giving one's life to Jesus and committing to follow him. 
You're yielding, you're giving your heart. It starts internally with the desire. Surrender, you're giving your life. You're making that decision to not just open your heart to the Lord, but Lord, here's my life. Here's what I want to do. An example that we talked a lot about was the disciples who forsook everything that they had. They left their businesses, their careers, they, they, and they wholly surrendered to following Jesus Christ. They gave it all up. They were willing to follow the Lord wherever he led, whatever he asked them to do, they were surrendered. They were surrendered. We as Christians need to have that same willingness that the disciples had. I, I remember hearing preaching like that when I was growing up, and uh, I was like, I don't, man, if I surrender, if I, just, if I say, Lord, I'm willing to go, whatever you need, I was afraid he was, God would send me who knows where. And so it, it, I was fearful of surrender because I didn't want to go to you name any country outside the United States. I didn't want to go there. <laughs> but I, I, had, I wanted to serve the Lord and I wanted to surrender, but I was like, oh, Lord, anywhere but here, anywhere but there. I wasn't fully, wholly surrendered. The, the truth is we need missionaries everywhere, all over the world. We need servants of God everywhere. But just because you surrender, say, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do, it doesn't mean God's going to send you to Timbuktu, right? It could just mean that when you surrender, God's going to open up an opportunity, a greater opportunity for you to serve right here in our local church. So a, a ministry, an opportunity, something that needs to be done in a position that you can fill in serving him. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to go somewhere around the world as a missionary or that God's going to call you to preach even, to be a preacher. It just being, but be surrendered. Lord, I'm willing to do what you want me to do. Willing to do what you want me to do. And uh, let me see here. So I'm going to skip that. I'm going to skip that. All right. So one of the things that I, I shared with the young adults downstairs was when God, when I first surrendered to preach, I was in high school and I had plans. I had plans. I was going to be an electrical engineer. That's what I determined I wanted to be when I grew up. And I was accepted at Pensacola Christian College. I'd gotten a little academic scholarship. I'd visited the college. They were starting, the year I graduated, they were starting an electrical engineering program. It was brand new, and I was going to be part of the first class that took that major. And at the same time, though, God began working in my heart. While that was what I wanted to do, God began working in my heart about being a preacher, surrendering to the ministry. And uh, it was a struggle for me. I could feel the Holy Spirit leading and guiding in my heart and in my life. I knew there was something that God was doing, but I was scared. I already said I was afraid if I surrendered, God would send me around the world somewhere I didn't want to go. And I fought it. I struggled with it. I didn't immediately yield. And I'd, t I'd take baby steps, and I'd start to yield. I'd start to, I'd say, all right, Lord, uh, I'll, I'll work on a bus route. I'll do something like that. I'll just, maybe if I get a little more involved in my church, then, then that's all that God will be satisfied. But it didn't matter what I did, how involved I got, the, I could still feel uh, that the Lord was leading me on to something greater. He wanted me to just surrender my life, to be a preacher. And, uh, but I fought it. So God, when I, well, the point, what I'm trying to get to is when we, when we don't surrender, God has ways of getting our attention. God has ways of nudging us where he wants us to be. What happened in my life it was, and many of you know, I've got a prosthetic eye in my right eye and whatever, but I, I had uh, my senior year playing basketball, uh, state semifinal basketball game, and I grabbed a rebound, and I'm going back up, and the defender tried swiping at the ball to block it and jammed his finger in my eye. And uh, that led to some damage to the eye, which led to a bunch of problems, and a few years later, I was completely blind, and then a few years after that, 
ended up need, having to have that eye removed and getting a prosthetic and all that kind of stuff. Well, I'd already told you God was working in my heart about surrendering the ministry, but I was, I was fighting it. And then this injury happened, and I, I didn't really think a lot of that and how it correlated, but as I was recovering from that, God really began to work in my heart. And I finally said, all right, Lord, I'll surrender to preach. I'll be a preacher. If that's what you want me to be, I'll be a preacher. And I'd made the decision. I'd already, like I already told you, I had scholarships and, and I had stuff lined up. going to be part of the first electrical engineering major class at Pensacola Christian College. And, and, but then the Lord changed my heart. Changed, I finally surrendered. And I said, all right, Lord, I'll do it. And then it, it wasn't a week later. I got a phone call from Pensacola Christian College from their admissions department. And they're like, oh, Brian, I'm really sorry to tell you this, but we're canceling the electrical engineering program for this year, and um, I, it's not available. You'll have to choose something else. And I think she was expecting me to be upset and whatever, you know, a different response. But I, my reaction was, oh, no, no big deal. It's like I was going to change to a Bible major anyway, and so let's just do that. And so, like, I, probably other students that she called were not the happiest when they got the news, but it didn't bother me at all because God had already moved in my life. He'd already directed me away from that. And then he used that all circumstance also to send me not to Pensacola, but Midwestern Baptist College in Pontiac, and uh, on and on the story goes. But it, the whole point is it, it took a little bit of extra work for God to get me where I was willing to surrender. And, and, and I'm thankful that he didn't give up on me. I'm, I'm thankful that God kept working on me. I'm thankful that he kept, uh, kept nudging me, kept moving me. And when I was resistant, he said, all right, let me just reposition you a little bit here. Let me just cause this thing to come into your life that's going to make you stop and think a little bit about what's going on. And finally, he got me to the place of surrender. So we see yielded giving one's heart to God, surrender, giving one's life in service to God. Then we see submission. The definition that we came up with of submission is this, spiritual discipline that involves willingly giving up one's rights, desires, and preferences out of a humble respect. Submission. Let me read that definition one more time. This is my favorite definition of all of them. It's a spiritual discipline that involves willingly giving up one's rights, desires, and preferences out of a humble respect. I think this is probably the toughest of all of them to really do. We see submission in a lot of ways in the Bible. We see it used in relation with the husband and wife, spouses submitting to one another. We see um, you know, the Bible says, submit yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord. And, and as brothers and sisters in Christ, as the family of God, we're to submit to one another. But when we're looking at this idea of submission, we're talking about just being wholeheartedly submitted to God. Getting to the place where we're willing to give up our rights. I have the right to do certain things in this world today, but out of submission to the Lord, I'm willing to give up those rights. Not because I have to. I can go do what I want after church tonight. But out of a submissive heart, I'm saying, Lord, it's not about what I want. It's not about my rights. I'm yielding to you and to what you want. My rights, my desires, my preferences, they don't mean anything. Lord, what do you want? It's out of humble respect. This is why a lot of people struggle with real submission to the Lord. And by the way, coming to church a couple of times a week is not a sign of real submission to the Lord. Right? That's just like kind of the starting place of submission to the Lord and obedience to God. Real submission is evidenced in our day-to-day -day lives and what we do outside of these walls how we behave, how we carry ourselves, how we are at work, how we are with our family, how we are with our neighbors and friends and whoever else. That's where real submission is evident. 
We need to submit ourselves to God. I don't know about you, but in the years that I've been a Christian, there's been many a time that the Holy Spirit of God convicts me about something, and I fight it. I'm a, I tend to resist being told what I have to do. I'm a little rebellious like that, like many of you maybe are. I don't, if somebody says I have to do something automatically, no matter what it is, I instantly don't want to do it, right? And, and so there's been many times when the Lord's convicted me and I resist because I think if I obey, then it's gonna, my life's going to be horrible. If I give this up, it's, everything's going to be terrible and I'm going to die. I, what am I going to do without this in my life? If I give this up, how am I going to survive? And we think the world's going to end as a result of it. I was thinking about this struggle with the Lord and how we over-exaggerate how horrible things are going to be. And it reminded me of uh, one of my favorite movies growing up as a child uh, was there was a Robin Hood movie with Kevin Costner in many years ago and uh, 30-some years ago or whatever. And there was a part in this movie where Robin Hood was fighting little John, this great big guy, in the middle of a river. And I don't even remember what all the context was, but they were, they were battling and, uh, for right, the right to pass through Sherwood Forest, I guess is what it was. And, and, but anyway, they were battling and, and uh, little John falls into the river. They were on the rocks and he fell into the river and he's in the water and he's flailing and he's like, I can't swim, I can't, whatever. And, and Robin Hood's there with his staff just kind of pushing on his chest a little bit. And he's like, do you yield? Do you yield? And, and finally he says, fine, I yield. And, and then he says, put your feet down. <laughs> and, and he was in water that was about three feet deep and he put his feet down and he stood up and he's like, oh, I thought I was going to drown and here it was only three feet of water and I could easily stand up. But I, I, I picture that when I picture us wrestling with God and, and not yielding, not submitting when God is trying to lead us into doing something, when God is convicting us about something and we, we build it up in our head like I could never do that because it's going to be awful and my life's going to end and I'm going to, you know, we make this horrible scenario when in reality if we just submit and give in and let the Lord win, he'd say, just put your feet down. And we could stand, we'd stand up and say, oh, wow, this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. We just need to learn to submit. And it's a spiritual discipline that involves us willingly giving up our rights and desires and preferences with a humble respect to God. Let's look at a verse here in 2 Chronicles chapter 30. Second Chronicles chapter 30. Listen to what it says in verse number 8. It says, Now be not stiff-necked as your fathers were. That's that resistance. Lord, I don't want to do what you're telling me to do. I'm, I'm, they're fighting. It says, But yield yourselves unto the Lord and enter into his sanctuary, which he has sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. Here we see the extreme where uh, Israel is, is fighting and arguing with God. They don't want to submit. They don't want to surrender. And the Lord says, hey, you need to submit and not be stiff-necked stiff like your fathers because the result of, uh, of not submitting is that God's wrath is going to come. So do you want to submit and have God's blessing or do you want to resist the Lord and face, as it says in verse number 8, the fierceness of of his wrath. I don't know about you, but I think I'd rather submit and have his blessing than resist and face God's judgment. Let me give you six principles real quick. That's all introduction. But I'm going to give you six principles real quick regarding being yielded, surrendered, and submitted. I'm not going to take time to preach all of these or any of them. I'm going to give them to you. I'll repeat them twice so you can jot it down. 
and then we'll be done. First of all, yielding or being yielded, surrendered, and submitted requires trusting God and His plan. Being yielded, surrendered, and submitted as a Christian requires us trusting God and His plan for our lives. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not in thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. You've got to trust that God has a perfect plan for your life. And that when He's leading you to do something or asking you to do something or convicting you about something you need to get rid of in your life, that if we obey, we'll be better for it. Trust. Secondly, yielding, surrendering, and submission to God are keys to overcoming sin in our lives. The Bible talks about laying aside every um, weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. If we were honest before the Lord tonight, each one of us, we'd have to say, yeah, there's this thing that I've struggled with. And it's been a battle. It's been a, something, it's been an ongoing occurrence in your life and you just can't seem to get over it. Well, being yielded and surrendered and submitted to the Lord is where it starts. The Bible talks about in, in James 4, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You want to overcome that temptation. It starts with submission. Number three, yielding, surrendering, and submission are the keys to navigating this world in a way that pleases God. I don't know about you, but I want my life to please the Lord. I want to please Him in all the things I do. Not just in my life at church, but in my home I want to please Him. In my work I want to please Him. Uh, uh, Every every day I want to please the Lord. And, And one of the foundational things to helping us learn to please the Lord is just being willing and surrendered and submitted. It'll help us to please Him every day in our lives. Number four, being yielded, surrendered, and submitted are keys to finding and staying in God's will for your life. Now, the will of God is a, is a topic that, you know, we could study and we could look at and, and, you know, dissect what does it mean and all that. Um, the fact is that God makes His will pretty plain for us in His Word. There, there's, there's many things that when, when we talk about the will of God, often we're thinking of, well, what is God's ultimate plan for my life? Where am I, where am I going to serve? And what ministry am I going to be a part of? That's, that's all great, and God does have a plan in regards to that for you. But when it comes to the day-to-day will of God, God makes it pretty plain how he wants us to live right here in his word. And so we just got to submit. We just got to submit. God wants to talk to us. I believe it's God's will for us to fellowship with him in prayer on a regular basis. We see the concept of prayer throughout the Bible. Why do we struggle with prayer? Because we haven't fully submitted. Because in order to spend time in prayer, we got to turn the TV off. We got to put away all of our, our hobbies. We got we to gotta carve out some time to pray. And that requires submission. God wants us to read his word. He wants us to to let him talk to us on a daily basis. That requires submission. I got to put what I want away and get out God's word and let him speak to me. And we can go on and on with a list of things that the Bible makes very clear. This ought to be a part of our lives on a daily basis. But every one of them requires a level of submission from us. Every one of them requires a level of submission. Giving, church attendance, witnessing, all these things. We could go on and on down a list of things that are pretty plain. It's every Christian's responsibility and God's will for every one of us. Why don't we do them all faithfully? Because we haven't submitted. We see, number five, that partial surrender or submission is not an option if you're going to please God. God's not looking for us to get in halfway. Or, Lord, I'll surrender this part of my life, but I'm not surrendering that. Lord, I'll submit to you in this area, but, Lord, I'm not going to 
tithe. I'm not going to, Lord, I'll, I'll come to church every week, but I'm not doing this. Lord, and, and that's not any way for us to please the Lord or have his blessing on our life. God's asking for us to surrender all. We sing it all the time. I surrender all. That's what God's asking for. That's what God desires. And then the last thought is that a yielded Christian will yield much fruit for the cause of Christ. A yielded Christian will yield much fruit for the cause of Christ. Let's look at Mark chapter 4 real quick and we'll close. I'm sure most are familiar with here. It's the parable of the sower. Went out and sowed some seed. And in verse number 8, we'll just read the one verse. It says, And some and other fell on good ground and did yield much fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some in 100. I believe that one of the things that ought to be a foremost desire on our heart is to produce fruit for God's honor and glory. Lord, I want to be a fruitful Christian. I don't want to be a withered up, dried fig tree. I want to be a a Christian that produces and bears much fruit. And it requires for us to do that a yielded heart, a surrendered life and a submissive spirit. If we're going to produce fruit for God, it's going to require that we have this mindset, this attitude in our life. Lord, help me to be yielded, surrendered, and submissive. Yielded so that my heart is in line with your heart. Surrendered so that my life is where you want my life to be and submissive so that I'm at the point where I'm willing to give up my desires to follow your leading and your plan for my life. That's what God wants for us. And if we'll get to that place, like I said, it'll help us to overcome sin. It'll help us to be confident that we are serving. We are doing exactly what God wants us to do. It'll help us to bear fruit. It'll put us in a position where we can please the Lord in all that we do. And my prayer tonight is that each one of us would have a desire. Like I said at the beginning, no matter how old you are, young you are, whatever stage of life you are in, Lord, I want my life to please you. So help me to be yielded, surrendered, and submitted. To what you'd have for me. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for the opportunity tonight to share this truth. And Lord, there's a lot to it. Well, Lord, we could spend the next couple of hours continuing to dissect these truths and looking further in Scripture at examples of those who were yielded and surrendered. And Lord, we could um, spend much time. And I pray that Perhaps something that was said tonight might spur the heart of the Christians that are here tonight to go home and continue to look into these concepts of being yielded, surrendered, and submitted to you. And Lord, most of all, that we'd all examine our own heart and our own life and say, how submitted am I? How yielded am I? How surrendered am I? And Lord, I pray that you'd all bring us to the point where we can honestly say, I've surrendered it all. Everything that I have, everything that I am, every want, every dream, every desire, I've placed it all at your feet. And I'm willing and able and waiting for you to lead and to guide in my life. Lord, what an amazing thing that would be and what an amazing, uh, Lord, what amazing accomplishments could be achieved for your honor and glory if each one of us would have that desire day in and day out. Lord, I pray that you just uh, let your Holy Spirit work in our hearts tonight. And I pray that you'd be glorified 
as a result of all of this. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'm not going to give an invitation tonight. I just, if the Lord's dealt with your heart, if you're the Lord's convicted you or moved you in some way, I just trust that you'll do business with the Lord and take care of uh, what you need to. Amen? All right. The young adults are, that are in here are thinking, we spent six weeks on that and you just did it in 35 minutes. So... We got a lot deeper in the conversations in our class, so if I'd have opened it up in here like we do in the class for conversation, we'd be here for a long time, I'm sure. So, all right, so we don't have prayer lists tonight because nobody's here to be able to do them, and so the ushers have brought me uh, the prayer requests that were turned in, and I'm just going to read these for you. We'll spend a little bit of time praying together tonight, and uh, then we'll be dismissed. So... Um, the first one here, uh, Ms. Sherry Henniger is still having problems with her diverticulitis. Did I say that right? Um, and uh, possible bacteria, bacterial infection. Um, so waiting on results of her blood cultures. So we want to pray for Miss Sherry. And then, um, let's see. Sorry, I'm reading these cold up here. And let's see, Miss Jennifer Bauck said today they took the furnace out so as to take out all of the substrate and subfloor. Um, Roger 